reaching us indicates that the extraordinary summit of the ECOWAS leaders has ended and the resolutions will be brought to you in our subsequent bulletins. Now to other issues, to effectively deal with the Southern Kaduna crisis, the Buhari administration will not sweep the major issues on the conflict under the carpet. Vice President Yemi Oshibajo gave this assurance at the ongoing Nigeria Bar Association Annual General Conference during a special conversation featuring him and the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Baja Biamila. The assurance in includes ensuring justice, fixing economic marginalization, and the prosecution of persons responsible for murders in order to ensure end to impunity. Describing the killings in southern Kaduna as mindless, callous, and heartbreaking, the Vice President condoled with those who have lost loved ones and those injured or who have suffered loss of property, stressing that these tragedies are unacceptable and are avoidable. While highlighting past and current efforts of the federal government in dealing with the situation, Vice President Oshibajo said steps are being taken towards the improvement of security in southern Kaduna with the establishment of military base there and air force surveillance. He also urged those who have concerns about the recently signed Kama legislation to approach the National Assembly for possible amendments. Meanwhile, the warring communities of southern Kaduna have vowed to own pursue and implement the peace pact signed to restore peace to their community. Key players from the area said the decision is born from the realization of a common circular security that binds the people. Lydia Sampson reports. This often ends on a round table when ravaging communities find a common ground. For the people of Southern Kaduna, it is simply time to stop the needless killings and live in peace. There is no two ways to that word peace. Peace has no alternative word than peace itself. And violence has no alternative word than violence itself. And peace leads to complete unity, progress, and interdependent on each other for all that one needs as a human being. This particular peace effort is developed, engineered, and by the communities themselves under the leadership of the Goa Tiap in Zangon Kataf, local government of Southern Kaduna. In every situation, there has to be a commitment to an attitudinal change. That's number one. And we are perceiving that there is a commitment to having a change of attitude. And under this change of attitude, we are again hoping that the concept of common secular security will now be brought to the uh, forefront of our relating together. Though still an ongoing process, the community leaders have resolved to bequeath to their people what many think impossible to a continuous engagement in Abuja, Lydia, Samson, NTA News. Let's now join Abolade Salami in Lagos to have the latest about the helicopter crash in Ikeja. Hello, Abolade. What can you tell us about the plane crash in Okwebi, Ikeja today? If you can hear me, just give us an update about the helicopter crash in Ikeja today. We seem not to be hearing from Abolade there. We will join him later when we establish you know, contact with him. Now, moving on, the Bernou State Governor Professor Babagana Zulum 
has commended President Muhammad Buhari for his political will and measures to end terrorism and other forms of criminality across the country. Governor Zodum gave the commendation at the inauguration of the Tuku Burata Institute for War and Peace. The French correspondent Ismail Musa in Burata, a local government area of Bordeaux State, has the details. With this, the Tuku Brata Institute for War and Peace, conceived in 2016 as a counter-terrorism museum, has been inaugurated. The institute, situated in Bratai, the local government area of Borno, is part of the Nigerian Army University system, devoted to the study of different warfare with emphasis on asymmetric conflicts and rehabilitation. The Tuku Brata Institute aims at training and capacity building for military personnel as well as civilians in counter-terrorism and counter-insurgency operations, humanitarian response, peace conflict and peace building, as well as reconstruction with a view to influencing policy at state and community levels. We shall continue to support our armed forces. When we occasionally criticize, we do so with a view to improving on our successes and not out of lack of appreciation. To the Vice Chancellor, Nigerian Army University Bureau, the research institute is among the Nigerian Army's non-kinetic approach in fighting Boko Haram. And it is part of the Nigerian Army's efforts at defeating the Boko Haram insurgency not only by kinetic force but intellectually by providing education, that thing which they do not want. The development of Tukubrata Institute for War and Peace began with this bullet riddled building. It was formerly the house of the chief of army staff which was attacked by the Boko Haram which was made to become museum which was later transformed to Tukuru Bratai Center for Counterterrorism uh, Center and now it has metamorphosed into Tukuru Bratai Institute for War and Peace. Staff quarters for the institute were also inaugurated. The institute with six specialized centers has a projection for expansion and collaboration with other research organizations across the country. From Bratai in the local government area of Borno State, Ismail Musa, NTA News. Okay, let's now go back to Abolade Salam in Lagos. Abolade, if you can hear me, can you give us an update on the helicopter crash in Ikeja today? All right, thank you, studios. We heard that as at 12 noon, when we got here, that the helicopter ABL 206 departed Port Harcourt, heading for the local wing of the Mutala Mohammed International Airport before the unfortunate incident occurred right at this building behind me, number 16, Salvation Road, here in Okpebi, in Ekeja. And immediately it happened, emergency responders came on, we had the last Lassema, we had Nema, that came to rescue. But when we got here, we were told that of the three occupants on board the aircraft, two died while one was rescued and taken to the hospital. Also, we, when we came here, we met policemen on ground, we met the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps to control the crowd because getting access here was a bit difficult when the crash happened because of the people that were here to see things for themselves. But as I speak with you now, the wreckage has been taken off and the black box has been taken away, taken to the AIB custody where they said further investigation so we carried out on it to know the actual cause of the crash. Okay, Abolade, have you any updates on the present health situation of the survivor? Yes, thank you. The information we got was that the last person that was taken to the hospital had severe injuries, but he's been taken to the hospital. That was the only information we got at, that, as at the time we got here, and we've not gotten anything again. But I have here with me the state's coordinator of NEMA, Mr. Ibrahim Fatality. Please come on, sir. Who was here when the incident happened and was involved in the rescue operation? Please, sir, can you tell us what happened and how you were able to make things go well? Well, at about uh, 11.45 a.m. this morning, uh, although we had several calls coming in about distressed uh, alerts, so we were communicating with other stakeholders to confirm, especially the fan and the tarmac. But fortunately, the NEMA 
Mission Control Center, which is a cosmos asset meant to distress uh, alert detection for maritime and aviation sectors sent coordinate and alerted us in Lagos here about the incident. Immediately, I had to relate back to FAN, NAMA, AIB, and other responders with uh, rescue responders. They moved in here, and the first thing we have to do, those who are closer on the ground must be contacted. And being an aviation incident, we have to move as fast as possible. And they, due to the, uh, the fastness nature of the response, we were able to save one life out of the three people on board. Two were uh, recovered dead. One was. Can you tell us uh, the present state of the person? Who well, the present state, we won't be able to state it until the hospital authority uh, gives details. Because once we finish a uh, operation at the site, we hand over to the hospital. Hospital management will continue administration. Thank you so much, Mr. Ibrahim. I can also confirm to you here that ever since the commission of police left this place, the area has been cutting off with the presence of security many on ground to ensure that nothing goes wrong in the building affected. For more reports here in Lagos, and I hand over, I, I, I hand you to Dotson in the studio. Thank you so much, Abolade, for that update. And now away from the helicopter crash, the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development has assured Nigerians of the commitment of the President Muhammadu Buhari-led administration to continue to engender food safety and security, as well as boost local production in agricultural businesses at the grassroots. The minister gave the assurance during a courtesy visit to Lagos State Governor Babajide Songulu at the Lagos State Government House, Ikeja Nosa Usla. Food insecurity is a serious concern throughout sub-Saharan Africa prior to the outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic. The minister, who explained that he is on a working visit to some government and private-owned agricultural facilities in Lagos State, commended Governor Babajide Sonwolu for ensuring food security during and after the total lockdown due to the pandemic. Agriculture in this country is probably now number one as the prime mover of the economy. And this pandemic that we have and we are still in battling with has reinforced the importance of agriculture, not only in this country, but probably in the entire world. The governor who applauded the federal government for its support since the pandemic reiterated his administration's commitment to increasing the state's food self-sufficiency to 100%, adding that the immortal rice mill is near 75% completion. So we did, we're happy. And we thank God that um, the fatality has not been out of proportion. In Lagos, we have less than 2%. You know, so so even the current honorable commissioner for health himself is in isolation, but he's doing well. Um, just to know that, just for people to know that um, the virus knew nobody. Governor Sonwolu assured the minister of the continuous support of the state government in Lagos, Nusa, Usula, NTA News. The Weights and Measures Department of the Ministry of Trade and Investment has sealed off at least 90 dispensing pumps at various petrol stations in Lagos. This aligns with the objective of ensuring compliance through testing and verification to reduce fraud. Amaka O reports. These are officials from the Weights and Measures Department on Inspection of Petroleum Products with the use of a 20-liter seraphine standard measure. We want to see the compliance in terms of certification of these flow meter pumps. Manager, can we see one, current one for year 2020? Yes, I have the current one, sir. I have the current one. Okay. Uh, compliance okay. officer is checking. Okay, okay. Okay, this is, this is a report is issued on the 8th January 2020. Okay, that's good. The target is to ensure uniformity of measurement, promote standardized business practices, and transparency at the dispensing points to encourage consumer trust. We are 
We are telling all the marketers they should pay their revenue at when due. Failure to do that will be prosecuted. And whoever will find the one thing will be prosecuted. The department whose surveillance role cuts across all sectors of the economy issues certificates of verification to promote trade among indigenous producers. In whatever uh, field you can think of, be it petroleum, non-petroleum commodities, electricity, telecommunication and anything, we have responsibility to ensure that Nigerians are not such as. We have to, we, it is our duty to ensure that there is value for money. Whatever you pay, you get the correct value of it. And if you are not uh, complying, we have the right to seal up your premises and, uh, uh, until you, you, everything is formalized. Weights and Measures Department remains consistent all year round in delivering its mandate to Nigerians. In Lagos, Amaka O, NT News. And back to the helicopter crash, reports just reaching us in a statement signed by the Special Advisor to the President on Media and Publicity. President Muhammad Buhari has commiserated with families, friends and associates of victims of the Bell 206 helicopter operated by Quorum Aviation, which crashed today in Obebi, Lagos State. While the nation awaits reports of the investigation into the accident by the aviation regulatory agencies, the president prays that God will console the bereaved families, grant peace to the souls of the dead, and speedy recovery for the injured. Let's now take a break. Nationwide, we'll be back after this. ATV College Jaws, an affiliate of Ahmad Tubelo University Zaria, is currently admitting students for its ordinary diploma programs in television journalism, television production, and television engineering. Interested candidates are advised to obtain relevant information concerning eligibility at our website at www.ntatvc.edu.ng or marketing department of any NTA station nationwide. For further information, contact Assistant Director Marketing NTA TV College Jaws on 0803-314-4383 or the Academic Office of the College on 0806-980-9807. Announcer, Registrar. Nationwide TV Guide, your indispensable companion. ICPC and NTA say you can help Nigeria to flatten the curve on COVID-19, just as you can help flatten the curve on corruption. Follow transparency, accountability, and integrity just as you follow health guidelines. Stay home with integrity and maintain your distance from corruption just as you stay away from COVID-19 by maintaining social distance. Report every act of corruption to ICPC just as you report COVID-19 to NCDC. from corruption, stay safe from COVID-19. Report any act 
of correction to ICPC on toll free number 0800-2255-4272. This message is brought to you by ICPC and NTA. You're welcome back. Now, the AIG Zone 16, Austin Agbalahon, says the multiple security checkpoints on the roads is a deliberate measure to improve security situation in the zone amidst the withdrawal of arms from local vigilante groups across the country. AIG Agbalaho said this at a first official visit to River State, where he interacted with officers and men under his command. Kinsley Amajiri reports. <laughs> The new AIG is in the state on a working visit, having assumed duties as the first AIG under the newly created Zone 16. The zone is made up of rivers and Bayasa states. Key concern to the AIG is the need for effective policing training for officers and men under his command and improved working environment. He said the reduced cases of kidnapping along the east-west road is an indication that the command in River State has been proactive. Our men are now everywhere. You know, when we're talking about vigilante and so on, they work with instruction and again in collaboration with, uh, you know, with the main police. I'm sure the presence of the men on the road has, you know, reduced this crime. We want to assure the AIG. The command is and we will continue to do our best with your experience. Other issues of concern were the community policing recruitment, in house training, manpower, logistics, and equipment challenges, which the AIG also addressed. In Port Harcourt, Kingsley Amajiri, NTA News. Issues of rape and other forms of gender-based violence are receiving more attention as more advocacies continue to dominate the center stage. Kenneth Nanim reports that a non-governmental organization, Break Forth Nigeria, is latest in the campaign on the need to break the silence culture regarding sexual abuses, especially on women and minors. Nigeria has enacted various laws to guard against rape and other sexual abuses, including the Child Rights Act and Violence Against Persons Act of 2015. Yet issues of rape and other sexual assaults continued unabated. To prefer a solution for this, one of the reasons for this is not. The issues are being put in perspective. If you keep talking, if you keep speaking, someday someone will listen. And if somebody listens, someday someone will act. And when we act, something will happen. The conference also identified fear of stigmatization and denial of justice, as well as some cultural beliefs. As some of the reasons victims of rape and other sexual abuses do not speak out. Rape is one case where you have two distinct scenes of crime. The body of the lady that has been violated or the body of the young man that has been violated is a living scene of crime. Why the physical location where the crime took place is another scene of crime. Both are important in the success of every investigation. The victim believes that episode every day of her life. It is going to be five, ten years, so it's easier we find a way of calling all of these institutions to assume the responsibility, do what is right, so that women would have a freer space to thrive. In tackling the issues head on, their voices are getting louder. Advocating domestication and ratification of all violence against persons act at all levels. Issues of child upbringing, human trafficking, drug abuse, and moral values are other areas requiring attention, which we are also streamlined. A 93-page book of 10 chapters with the title Lend Your Voice, believed to be an advocacy tool to end rape and all forms of sexual molestations in the country, authored by the country coordinator of Red Fork Nigeria, was also unveiled. Kenneth Nanim. NTA News. The Minister of State for Foreign Affairs, Ambassador Zuberu Dada, has inaugurated a 14-member ad hoc committee on the establishment of the Nigerian Diaspora Investment Trust Fund, 
with a mandate to advise on the mission, sources and objectives of the fund. Uche Ugochuku was at the virtual inauguration in Abuja. The Red Diaspora Commission is mandated by the Act to harness the resources, skills and talents of the over 17 million Nigerians in diaspora for national development, setting up a private sector-led Nigerian Diaspora Investment Trust Fund is one of the three point outcomes of the first Nigeria Diaspora Investment Summit in 2018 to assist in achieving the goal. This committee is set up with Nigerians of high repute people of integrity and who understand the investment climate globally and are patriotic enough to assist the Nigerian diaspora to complement government's efforts in national development. The committees to advise did come on the following. The mission and objectives of the trust fund, the structure of the fund, especially a private sector led and driven by the Nigerians in the diaspora. The ad hoc committee has Dr. Ali Garba as chairman and Professor Mani Anebunam as co-chairman. It is expected to submit a report in one month as a guide to the establishment and takeoff of the trust fund. Uchi Ugochuku, NTA News. In an effort to allay fears expressed by the leadership of the church about the recently enacted Companies and Allied Matters Act, Kama 2020, Vice President Yemi Oshibajo says concerns can be processed through possible amendment of the contentious section of the law through a proposal to the National Assembly as the nation is in a democracy. The Vice President said this during a conversation at the ongoing Nigerian Association Annual General Conference. The Vice President says the Kama Law is a massive legislation that covers a wide range of issues and a small portion of it called the Incorporated Trustees Section regulates charities that affect the church. The Vice President explained that churches, mosques and church organizations are regarded as charities and it is the Incorporated Trustees Section of the Companies and Allied Matters Act that has become controversial. Now, preparations for the reopening of Akano EPM International Airport on Top Gear. We now join Chinaya in Enugu for these and more stories. Chinaya, it's over to you. Welcome to Enugu. Business community and residents of Enugu are in high spirit as the Akanu Ibia International Airport Enugu is set for reopening on Sunday, 30th August 2020, after being closed for about one year to upgrade facilities as well as undergo major rehabilitation work on its runway. Jude Abugu is standing by with updates on preparations for the Sunday's reopening of the airport. We are at the main entrance of the Akano Ibrahim International Airport, Enugu, where preparations are on top gear for the Sunday's reopening of the airport. After one year of closure to undergo rehabilitation work on the runway and also upgrade of the facilities. You can see that apart from the much talked about runway and facility upgrade, so many things are wearing new look at this airport, including the terminal buildings and also the monument you are seeing at the entrance. No wonder it is eliciting a lot of excitement among residents and business communities in this Enugu metropolis. We've uh, suffered a lot of losses and delays. Now that the airports are going to open, our people are rejoicing. With the reopening of international airport, I can tell you that many people of the South East that are overseas that are willing to come, they can happily come. Christmas is coming and there will be a lot of business activities. Some of them believe that although it took longer than they expected for the completion of work and reopening of the airport, but it was worth waiting for. As the status of the airport now will attract more investors. We now have a runway that can take bigger aircraft. We now have a runway that you can ascribe to international standard. And that is a good development. It is going to open up the economy of the Southeast. It is no longer about how many months or weeks to the reopening of the airport, but a matter of hours from now. From Akanibian International Airport, Enugu, Jude Abugu, NTN News. 
The role of the media in information dissemination and nation building is crucial, hence the need for partnership with government. The Imo State Governor Hope Uzorima stated this when the President of the Nigerian Union of Journalists, Chris Isiguzu, paid him a courtesy visit at the government house, Oweri. Bright Ibuchu reports. By the National President of the Nigerian Union of Journalists, Chris Isiguzu and other leaders of the union in the southeast who were in Imo State for their Zona executive meeting afforded them the opportunity to share ideas on effective ways of fostering good relationship between government and the media. Governor Hopo Zodema, who acknowledged the role of the media in national development, describes members of the fourth estate of the REM as partners in progress, urging them to remain committed to promoting accuracy and truth in their reportage. Anytime. You want me to do anything but to project the interest of our people, the interest of the country. If it is something within my reach that I can afford, just feel free to ask, I'll be willing to do that. The NUJ National President, Chris Isiguzu, commends Governor Zodima for his commitment to infrastructural development, especially in the area of roads construction. Highlight of the visit was the presentation of a commendation plaque by the Imo State Chairman of the NUJ, Chris Akaronye, to the Governor, Inoere. Bright Ebuchio, NTA News. And that is it from Enugu. Ifoma is back to you in Abuja. Thank you very much, Chidengu. Nigeria is making significant progress towards completing its second African peer review process despite the restrictions of the COVID-19 pandemic. National Coordinator of the African Union Development Agency and the new Partnership for Africa's Development, MEPAD, Gloria Akubondo, said this at a media briefing in Abuja to sensitize Nigerians on the process. Metari Ipin reports. Initiated in 2003, the African Peer Review Mechanism is a self-assessment process for African countries to replicate best practices for political stability, economic growth and sustainable development. Nigeria had its first peer review in 2008 and the setting up of the National Governing Council by President Muhammad Buhari set in motion the second peer review process. The review will help achieve a proper statistics of governance in Nigeria and set roadmap of implementation called National Program of Action. Nigeria hopes to join three other countries that have completed their second peer review. What is happening there in Mali is a mistake. It's unacceptable by the family of APRM. We want a better Africa. We want Africa that will be piloted in peace. In the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic, Nigeria's NEPAD and APRM Secretariat under the Office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation has since deployed ICT for broad sensitization of Nigerians and virtual trainings on the administration of questionnaires to ensure a successful second peer review process. In Abuja, Mitaire, Igben, NTA News. The Federal Ministry of Mines and Steel Development has reemphasized its commitment to developing mining potentials in Benue State for the purpose of revamping the economy. Minister of State in the ministry, Samson Oga, said this when he visited Governor Samuel Otom at Government House Makodi. Charles Abba reports. The Minister of State, Mines and Steel Development, Samson Chechuku Oga, who acknowledged the huge mineral resources in Benway State, reiterated the Buhari administration's vigorous pursuit to develop mining and agriculture to diversify the nation's economy from oil. He said his visit to the state is to seek collaboration with the state government to develop the mining sector to create wealth, generate revenue, provide employment for the teaming youths, and increase private sector investment in the mining activities. We, in the Ministry of Mines and Steel Development, are particularly glad that peace, calmness, normalcy, which now prevail across the state, have stimulated the resumption of mining, which now mining and other economic activities in the state. We must find it necessary to set politics aside, 
there are synergies to ensure that we push smiles on the faces of our people. He, however, called on the federal government to grant autonomy to state governments to issue licenses to legitimate minors as to strengthen the desired synergy. In Makudi, Charles Abba, NTA News. As part of efforts to cater the infrastructural needs of over 2,000 border communities in the country, the federal government has handed over a skills acquisition center to Jiga State government. The project is a constituency project of a senator representing Jigawa Northwest Senatorial Zone and Chairman Senate Committee on Information, Senator Anladi Abdullahi Sankara. Bashir Ibrahim has the details. Our state is among the 21 states captured in the activities of the Border Communities Development Agency due to its strategic location. The establishment of the Skills Acquisition Center was facilitated by the Senator representing Chigawa Northwest Senatorial District, who also chairs Senate Committee on Information, the Ladi Ablai Sankara, as a constituency project. The four benefiting local governments under the constituency include Taura, Garchi, Gagarao, and Gua, with the aim of empowering and improving their living conditions. Receiving the project on behalf of the state government, Deputy Governor Umar Namadi assured that the state government will evolve synergy with the four affected local government councils to equip the center with relevant training materials and open it for immediate use. I also want to assure the distinguished senator and the border community agencies that 